this is where we left off from last week. And uh, remember, in this series of examples over here, we talk about how you, how you can derive the asymptotic upper bounds, or big O, on mathematical functions. And what we would like to do to begin with uh, this week is to see how we can apply such derivation of uh, upper bounds, big O, on algorithms, or implemented Java code. That's something we would like to do today. But I would, I would like to make some remarks about the uh, using uh, the use of Vigo before we actually move on to the example series which I prepared for you. Uh, sit tight and get ready. All right, so uh, I would like to make some remarks uh, as I mentioned. So here we want to say uh, two more remarks, two bullet points over here to go over one at a time. Whenever you use the Vigo notation in, uh, to, characterize the, uh, to characterize a function, for example, algorithms running time, you want to make it as closely as possible. So what do I mean by that? Meaning that even though you don't really get as closely, it may not be incorrect. However, it's not very useful. So that's, so that's the bottom line. Let's take a look what I mean. So for example, let's say we got a running time f of n is simply uh, 4 uh, n cube plus 3 n squared plus 5. And you can see very easily the highest power is n3 by dropping the lower terms and by dropping the multiplicative constants. So that's why we got big O of n to the power of three. All right. However, recall proposition number two about uh, how we can relate the families of big O functions. Let's take a look. This is the proper subset relation I spoke about last week. Please make sure you understand what it means exactly rather than just a subset, it's a proper subset, okay? So we are saying that, big, uh, for example, big O of n cube is a proper subset of big O of n to the power of four, and also it's a proper subset of uh, n to the power of five. And let's visualize this very quickly, and then we'll see exactly the point I want to, I want to convey to you. Okay. So remember the proper subset notation. Okay. Let's now start with the inner, the most inner circle over here. So let's say this family over here is everything, every function that can be upper bounded by n to the power of three over here, all right? Let's have another uh, superset uh, outside that. So let's say this one here, the purple one, okay? So this one over here is big O of n to the power of four over here. And finally, let's get the outermost family over here. Right, we're only talking about the power of three, four, and five. That's what we are focusing on for this particular example. And to the power of five, all right? That is proper subset because, for example, uh, let's say this. Number one, every function that can be upper bounded by n to the power of three, they can guarantee to be upper bounded by n to the power of four and also n to the power of five by choosing the relevant uh, constants and also n zero, as we said earlier, right? Let's now just uh, re remind ourselves very quickly, okay? Functions are propounded by n to the power of three by choosing c and also n zero can also be are propounded by Upper bounded by M4 and also M5, right? Let me just use the same color over here. N to the power of 4 and also N to the power of 5, right? It's guaranteed, right? You can see that very easily visually, okay? On the other hand, let's now take a look at this, uh, this one over here, right? So that's the idea about proper subset. This family is a proper subset of this family over here because there might be some function that's actually in this purple family n to the power of four that cannot be upper bounded by the smaller family, right? That's something I want to brush up together with you. That's a very important learning outcome from last time, okay? Functions upper bounded by n to the power of four cannot necessarily, so some of them maybe, some of them maybe not, cannot necessarily 
B, upper bounded by n to the power of 3. Okay, let's use that blue over here. For example, you can see for this particular function, for example, this example could be maybe uh, uh, 4n to the power 4, right? This definitely can be upper bounded by n to the power 4, but it cannot be upper bounded by n to the power 3 because the growth of n to the power 4 is simply way too fast. It's simply no possible way for you to choose arbitrarily large constant c that will actually allow this one to catch up, right? That's something we also said earlier uh, last week. However, you can see this one over here. On the other hand, this one here, you can see definitely can be upper bounded by this, but at the same time can also be up, upper bounded by this because it's in this uh, strictly smaller family. So that's why the language I'm using over here is very, very precise over here. That's why I said not necessarily. Cannot necessarily, right? That's something I would, I would like to start with, all right? And let's now say this, okay? Because uh, let's now uh, just go back to this very first point I made. Upper bounded by, upper bounded by n to the power three can also be upper bounded by n to the power four and n to the power five. That is why the following statement will be true. Let's see this. If I say uh, over here, uh, let me just uh, use that partic particular example. I said four n cube. Uh, let me write it down on my notes. For example, over here. 4n cubed plus 3n squared plus 5. Okay, that's the one that we want to look at. Okay, so you can, uh, let's say this is uh, this function over here is order of uh, n squared, uh, this is the order of an order of n cubed n to the power of 4 and n to the power of 5, right? Is big O of n to the power of 3 and also big O of n to the power of 4 and also o, big O of n to the power 5. When you say this function over here is a big O of this, this is a big O of this, this is also a big O of this, all three of them are true. Okay, they are all true. So true, and also true, and also true. However, think about the very purpose of stating of stating the running time, the asymptotic upper bound of your running time. You want to give any potential user an idea what the worst case is. In theory, everything according to the asymptotic upper bound can be, in the worst case, exponential because everything can be upper bounded by the exponential function. I'll give you one extreme case, okay? one extreme. It might sound a little bit hilarious, but it's actually true. Think about the Hello World program that every one of us know when we first learned Java. The Hello World program. Right? Hello World program. And we know that that one is actually very easy. It will simply just print out Hello World. Print out Hello World. And over here, it would be correct to say this algorithm over here, which is a single line of printing statement, is actually big O of 2 to the power of n. It would be correct because this constant operation can be upper bounded by choosing some constant, uh, multiplicative constant for 2 to the power of n and be upper bounded. It's for sure, right? You can actually choose even one, so that will actually work. You can prove it. However, telling the user that my Hello World program is such a big O of 2 to the power of n they will laugh at uh, they will laugh at you. <laughs> you actually not really know. Uh, you don't really know what you're talking about, even though you're talking about something that's true, right? So the point over here is, whenever you want to stay the upper bound for your algorithm running time, you want to be as accurate as possible, right? Knowing that everything can be upper bounded by uh, some power that's actually larger than what it actually is. In that case, you want to choose the most accurate, the closest one to the actual power. Okay, so now in this case, you really want to say it is big O of n to the power of uh, 3. And these two are not simply accurate. Okay, so these two over here, even though they are true, they are actually correct, but not accurate. All right, similarly, this one over here to say hello world is actually upper bounded by 2 to the, two to the power of n. Is also correct, but not 
not accurate. Very, very inaccurate, actually, but inaccurate. Well, of course, you want all you want to say is hello world it should be a constant operation big O of one, all right? Hopefully, you can now see the whole th uh, that what we said last time about linking families together, and then how accurate you should really say about the running time. You want to really find the smallest family that will actually enclose your function, not the bigger one, all right? Let's now go back over here. Well, exactly what I just meant over here. That's already uh, set. All right. On the other hand. It would be it would be incorrect, for example, to say four to the power of uh four n to the power of four over here is big O of n to the power of three, right? In that case, you simply just cannot actually find any uh, constant c and n zero, right? It's uh, quite obvious, right? You want to be as accurate as possible, but you definitely want to want to for this one here, you don't want to choose a family that's actually way smaller than uh way smaller in order to really upper bound this particular function. It's just not uh even correct. All right. Well, you want to really know about what 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 it really means to be accurate and what it means to be correct, being true. All right. All right. The second um, remark I would like to make about the big O is you don't really want to write something like this. You don't want to say big O of four n square plus six n plus nine. You don't want to do that, right? So what you want is you can say four n square plus six n plus nine. It is big O of n square, but you don't want to say the the uh, the opposite, right? Let me just uh, write it down for you. Okay, that's now for n square plus six n plus nine. You can say four n square plus six n plus nine is big O of n square, but you don't want to say something like four n square plus six n plus nine is big O of Four n squared, even plus maybe three n, right? You don't want to say that, right? So this is good, and this is no no. You don't want to say that. There should be only the highest power turn by dropping the multiplicative constant and also lower turn. You only keep the highest power in the big O. That's what you got to do. However, what you will see later uh, in this week, we're going to see that there will be some intermediate. Uh, calculation that we may have to do like this, but the final answer for sure, we're definitely going to drop all the lower term and also multiplicative constant. That's something you will see when I derive the running time, the uh, uh, the asymptotic upper bound on the running time for algorithm. That's what you will see. And, right, let's now go over a few more slides just to conclude about the mathematical analysis on functions and then we'll apply math into Java code, which will be exciting. Okay? Right, there's a table just summarizing about all the running time function, the common ones. We got a constant time operation, cheapest one, right? Because uh, in some way, constant time is the best you can hope for, right? Because it doesn't matter how large the input is, input size is simply not relevant. You always remain to be some constant time for the running time. And the next one will be log n, which is very good. You know, even for 10 million on the, uh, on the size of your input, it's still going to be just 23 about 23 point something, right? It's still pretty good. And also linear time, right? Just uh, proportionate by some constant factor to your input size. And we got n log n, and we definitely some, see some n log n algorithm when we speak about some sorting uh, algorithms later in the course. And also quadratic, and that's uh, more, more expensive than n log n because we know that n is actually more expensive than log n, right? You can see n itself is more expensive than log n. So that's why when you say n log n, it will be cheaper than n squared. That's why, quadratic, okay? And n cube, and also in general poly polynomial, it can be any uh, power over here, n to the power of k, right? The higher the power is, the more expensive your algorithm's running time. Uh, the, the higher the power is for the running time, big O over here, the more expensive your algorithm is in terms of the time. And the most expensive will be exponential. Of course, when you derive the running time, you want to be as accurate as possible. But if it turns out the most accurate character characterization of the asymptotic upper bound of your running time is exponential, you may want to think twice whether your algorithm might be too, uh, way too expensive, right? Usually, uh, when we solve uh, new problems, uh, many of them should, uh, should not really uh, get to the stage of being exponential, just too expensive, okay? That's a diagram over here. You can see 
even for small input of the input size, okay, horizontal axis is the input size, and vertical axis is about the running time. You can think about the relative running time. Even for 10 to the power of one input size, you can see the exponential is start to grow so rapidly com consider with, uh, compared with others. And the ones about uh, the constant over here, this is a constant function, you can see simply lie down around over here, flat over here. And log n, this is a log, log, uh, log, uh, logarithmic uh, over here, function here, is slightly uh, steeper than the constant function. It does have some slope. And then we got uh, linear, and then we got n log n, and we got quadratic, and then we got uh, the polynomial, you know, the different functions. Right, you can just uh, use the, use this diagram over here to give some uh, give you some visual intuition about how different classes of running time functions should really grow. Right, that's something you want to know uh, very well. Already, so we have completed the math foundation for you to really derive the uh, asymptotic upper bounds or big O for mathematical functions up to this point, and we are now going to apply all these concepts into deriving the asymptotic upper bounds on implemented Java code or algorithm. That's something we'll see in the next series of examples.